In this video, you will learn what the current and voltage counting errors in electrical networks are, what they are all about, and what the difference is between the passive and the active reference system. And in addition to the necessary theory behind everything, there's going to be an example where I show you in a very simple circuit how to set up a loop equation, how to correctly consider the counting errors and both of the sources and of the consumers. And finally, as always, there's going to be a summary of the most important facts from this video at the end. And my name is Andreas from The Fearless Engineer, and here we go. Now let's briefly discuss the concept of counting errors in circuits. If you have watched the video on Kirchhoff's second law, you already know what the loop rule states, uh, which says that the voltage drops counted across the, 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 the elements in a closed circuit, in a closed loop in a circuit, results in zero. So if we uh, look at this loop here, where you can see my, my mouse cursor moving, which incorporates the voltage source, the first resistor and the second resistor, and we we count all the voltages, which is the source voltage and the voltage drops across these passive components here, then the sum is going to be zero. The problem with this uh, simple statement here is that this is only true if we uh, correctly respect the various voltages in terms of the reference counting system, which is valid for this for this circuit here. And this is what we're going to look at in this video here. So the statement of the loop rule is only true if we correctly take into account the signs of the voltages in, in a closed loop. And the counting arrows provide us with a means to clearly identify with which sign we have to introduce a, a voltage drop into the loop equation. So when circulating through a circuit, the count is positive when we move into the direction of the counting arrow and negative if we move against it. And this is what we're going to take a closer look in the following in the remainder of this video. Counting arrows for voltages, they point from higher to lower potential. This is something you can observe in this small circuit at the bottom here. On the left, we have a power source, a voltage source. This uh, voltage source has a positive terminal on top, which is also color coded in green to indicate that it has a high potential. And on the bottom, you can find the negative terminal, which has a potential of zero, which is color coded in gray. And when we follow the path of the current through this unbranched circuit, we can see that across this resistor here on the right, potential energy is converted into other forms and the potential Potential, the electric potential is thus reduced from a maximum at the, at, the, at the top of the resistor to a minimum at the bottom of the resistor. There are two different counting arrows, two new counting arrows in this, in this small diagram here. Uh, we have the previously already seen reference counting arrows for voltage drops, but now we also have a counting arrow for current flow. And in case of the battery, the current flow occurs through the circuit, and in this case, away from the positive terminal. So the, uh, the counting arrows for voltage and current with such an active component, they oppose each other. They lead into opposite directions. Whereas with a passive component, such as this resistor here, um, the current counting, counting arrow leads into the same direction as the voltage counting arrow. This is because we can simply um, we can simply follow the path of the current through the circuit and in case of the passive component um, this coincides with a loss of potential energy and in case of the battery um, we do not observe a flow of electrons through the battery in terms of this perfect energy source which we have in this in this um, in the circuit here. We have looked at um, a lemon battery before and we know there is a flow of current also within a battery, but in this case, with such a perfect battery, there's no current flow which we are looking at when we when we uh, find the direct path between positive and negative terminal. The current always flows through the circuit from one terminal to the next. However, if we needed to, uh, to draw a very long voltage counting arrow from the positive terminal all the way to the negative terminal, this would not be very practical. So this is why with active components, we choose to draw the voltage reference counting arrow from directly across the component from positive to negative terminal. And the current flow occurs out of this, this active component. And with resistors, it's the other way around. So we have this, these two conventions, the active sign convention and the passive sign convention.
What we can also do, and this sometimes leads to a certain degree of confusion, we can reverse the direction of the, of the counting arrows. And this is sometimes done when we, for example, are not aware of the distribution of potentials in a circuit because we have not built it yet or we are not able to simulate um, the potential, uh, the, the development of potential energy through a circuit. So we basically are blind, but we nonetheless want to, uh, want to generate, let's say, a loop equation. And in such a case, we can simply assume a voltage drop across a component, let's say in the direction of this blue arrow here, and we do not know um, the distribution of potentials, which of course is color coded here and shows us that the left side has a higher potential than the, than the, than the right side. And we have already learned that um, usually if you know about the distribution of potential energy in a circuit, you should always uh, draw the arrow from the higher to the lower potential. But in this case, we have uh, drawn it in the other way around. So what we have to do here, we have to compute the difference difference between um, the, the, the start of the counting arrow and its tip. And in this case, it's the potential at position number B um, minus the potential at position number A, which is higher, of course. And in this case, this leads to a negative sign in the voltage drop. So if we decide to draw the counting arrow in the other direction, then the sign of the voltage drop reverses from positive to negative. So we have now drawn the resistor in the active sign convention. And on the right, we can see the passive sign convention, which is what uh, is used in most cases, especially when we know about the distribution of energy in the circuit. Now let's take a look at the small example which I simulated here. Now in this uh, circuit on the left you have a power source uh, term U1 with um, a voltage of 10 volts which it generates across its terminals and on the right you have a second power source which is called U2 which generates a potential difference of 5 volts across its terminals. And then we have these two resistors here and uh, in between these two current sources and resistors we observe a current flow of 500 milliamps. Now if you look at um, the direction of flow, you can see that the current leaves the left source and flows into the right source. So the left source is charging the right source. This, this could, for example, happen if you charge the battery of your phone, then the power um, flowing or the power generated by your wall socket, the current flowing from your wall socket charges the, um, the battery inside your phone. And this is exactly what's happening here. We have a power source on the left with a potential difference of 10 volts, which is higher than on the right. And this is why the electrons flow or the, the current flows from higher to lower potential and in the process charging the battery. And in this case where the right battery is basically acting as a consumer because it is taking up energy um, provided by another source, it makes sense to draw it in the pass to integrate it in the passive sign convention into the circuit. So the counting arrow um, also goes from positive to, to negative terminal, but due to the direction of current flow, we have now bo pointing both, uh, both into the same direction, which makes this a passive sign convention. And on the left you can see the other voltage source also with the reference arrow for voltage pointing from the positive to the negative terminal but with the current flow into the opposite direction which makes it uh, the active sign convention which should be used in most cases for a voltage source. So depending on the direction of current as well as the distribution of counting arrows in your circuit it is determined whether a symbol is in the active sign convention or in the passive sign convention. Now when we apply the loop rule to this simple circuit here, we can start by summing up the voltage drops of the various components. We start directly beneath the left resistor R1. This is the current drop UR1, then comes UR2. And then we have the right um, power source, the voltage source termed U2. This is counted positive because we move into the direction of the reference counting arrow. And then we move against the direction of the reference counting arrow of the left power source, which is called U1. And the sum obviously of all the components in this closed loop is going to be zero. Now we can replace the two voltages for the resistors with the product of resistor value times and current, which is Ohm's law. And if we isolate the current I 
and um, bring it to the left side and everything else to the right side, you get this equation here. The ratio of the differences of the two voltages, U1 minus U2, and the sum of the two resistors. And from this equation, you can see that as long as U1 is larger than U2, uh, the current I has a positive sign and will flow from left to right. But as soon as um, the voltage across the the voltage generated by the right power source is larger than the voltage drop across the first power source, um, the direction of current flow will reverse and this is going to be a negative sign. So the ratio of the two voltages determines the sign of the current in this example. Now let's quickly summarize the most important findings from this video here. The first is that the direction of current and voltage drop are marked by counting arrows in the circuit diagram. Also, the voltage counting arrow points from the higher to the lower potential for, of a component in most of the cases. Thirdly, in the so-called passive sign convention, current and voltage point to the same direction. In the active sign convention, it is just the other way around. And depending on the behavior of a component, it can either be represented in the active or also in the passive convention. And if you choose to represent it in the convention which is not fitting to the component, for example, a resistor in the active sign convention, then you basically reverse the sign of the, of the voltage drop with which we respect this component in the loop equation. This is basically all for now. If you have any questions, drop me a comment down below. And as always, I wish you a nice day. See you next time here on The Fearless Engineer.